Hi everyone. Today I'm going to continue working on implementing the Flux architecture in C# -sharp in order to properly manage state in Blazor. So in my previous video, which is the part one of the state management, today is the part two. So in the part one of the state management, I have uh, covered the theory as well as implemented the the first level of observer pattern, aka uh, publish subscribe pattern. So let's have a quick recap. When we're dealing with stateful components like Blazor components, uh, we have a view that user can interact with, and then the, the, the interaction will trigger some events. Events are handled, right? And then the, uh, that will mutate the state, and the state will update the view and the view. So this is all good, but when the application gets complicated, the state will need to be centralized. It's unavoidable, right? So in this case, uh, we have this uh, store that is a central central location where the state is stored, right? and their two components are sharing the same state, right? and the same kind of triangle is happening, right? Uh, and then, so this centralization is uh, basically observer pattern, or it's also called uh, publish subscribe pattern, right? Uh, our uh, state store is the subject, and uh, our uh, components are the observ observers, right? Uh, so like this. But in the case that we want to modify multiple stores, we right, modify the state, mutate the states in multiple stores at the same time. We cannot do it uh, with this. So we have the second level of observer pattern where the stores are observing the dispatchers. So the dispatcher can publish uh, actions, the messages to the stores, right? And then the store receive, when the store receives the action, the store can decide whether the store wants to process the action or not process the action, right? And then the store will notify the state change to the components and this component's view gets updated. So there's the flux architecture is nothing um, but just two level of Observer pattern, right? So last time I've implemented the the first level, which is this one, right? And today I'm going to implement the second level of the observer pattern. All right, let's jump into Visual Studio and work on implementation of dispatcher. So last time I have implemented this counter store, which contains a uh, counter state. This counter store allow the components to mutate the states in two different ways. So one should one is increment the count, the other one is decrement the count. Right? So there's two methods that corresponds to that. And also it allows the counters, allows the components to register uh, and deregister from the store, right? So basically listen to the store or remove the listener, right? So add listener and remove listener. And uh, if we go to our counter, uh, component. This is from the initialize method. Um, we are adding the listeners, right? And then we're using uh, the manage injection, inject the counter store uh, into our uh, component, and we're using counter store get state dot count to display the count. And from our navigation menu. Navigation menu. We also dependency injected kind of store and displaying that store. And when we we are increment and decrement, we can see the count change uh, in ch changes in two different places. One is on the navigation menu right here. The other one is in the counter component, right? And that works very well. So today I'm going to continue implementing the dispatcher. Right. So let's go back to our on your store and uh, before I continue implement the dispatcher I want to point out one thing sorry let's go to our counter component uh, I want to point out one thing before I continue working on the dispatcher which is this uh, at listener uh, I have the remove state change listeners there but I didn't use it and um, and in my previous video I said this is I said that this is a demo so I'm not going to implement that but I want to emphasize that this is very, very important because the counter store is um, 
a dependency, in dependency injected into our components, and the counter store is added as a scope, right? Uh, a scope, which is scope to the connection, right? This is blazer. This is server side blazer. So as scope is uh, scope to the connection. So if you don't refresh your page, the counter store will, will live as long as the connection. Uh, so unless you click on the refresh button, then that's, you know, this is recreated. So that means that because we registered to the counter store, essentially we make the component has the same lifespan as the store, which is a scoped, right? As long as the connection. So when you navigate away, Blazor framework is supposed to dispose it but it cannot dispose it because the store holds a reference to the component. So it cannot dispose it. And when you, ref uh, when you come back to the counter component, it will recreate, it will create another instance of this. So because it cannot dispose it, when you navigate away and navigate back, navigate away and navigate back, it will create multiple instances with the same component, right? It will never uh, release that, will never recollect that. So this is a memory leak that we have to do with. So in order to do that, I want to emphasize that that we have to do with that. And uh, in the way to do that is uh, we need to implement the idisposable uh, interface. And then inside of our code block, we need to implement the dispose method where we have to say you know, counter store remove uh, remove what? Uh, so instead of using the inline arrow function, so uh, if we use private void update do, right? And in here, we're going to call the state change. Right? And then instead of doing this, we just call, just put update view here. And when we remove, we also remove update view. So so this is it. This, when the component is disposed, this dispose method will be called, and then it will deregister the listener, right? So we we'll detach the counter from the counter store, uh, which in turn allows garbage collector to collect the the instance of the counter counter component. All right, so let's get started with implementing the dispatcher. So in order to, to implement a dispatcher. Uh, we first we need to you know the dispatcher dispatches the actions so we first have to implement the actions so the actions um that's uh they're different kind of actions right so first will be uh, increase like increment action so we add a class increment action And in there, uh, we can declare a, a constant, um, which we can call it increment or let's just call it increment, right? And then increment, right? Uh, but remember that <clears throat> we're going to have a decrement action. We have all kinds of different actions. Uh, but dispatcher should be able to dispatch all kinds of different actions. So for that, we, we need to use poly, polymorphism. And uh, um, we can use interface. So we're going to have a I action uh, interface. Right? And, and for that, we will go outside here we we'll add another uh, interface here we we'll say we call it I action and the action has to be able to identify itself about you know what kind of action it is so that our store is able to uh, distinguish what kind of actions is and decide whether the store will handle the action or not right so for that we need to um, uh, need to have a read-only property just to get the, uh, the name of that uh, the action okay, so we can have that have it like this 
and so so um, show dot uh, we're gonna implement the interface right so we have this and then we're gonna say is we just you know, we just return increment and that's it right so and and we're gonna copy this and change the strict increment because we are going to demonstrate two actions right um, increment and decrement decrement action and then come over here we call it uh, decrement action and then here we're going to call it you know, decrement and then decrement and decrement okay i want to mention that the reason why we use classes as actions instead of just use a string or constant or enumeration uh, is that sometimes action will not only carry the information about the name of that action to identify what type of action it is but also will carry some um, useful information like fun functional information in it for example if we were to allow our user to set the count of the counter directly instead of just increment and decrement, we need to allow the user to input a number, right? And when we create a set number action, that action need to contain that number that the user input. In that case, having a class like this, right? And then input a, uh, sorry, implement a you know, property like this, well, it's going to be a number, right? Uh, like this will help us to uh, transfer that information from the component to the dispatcher and from dispatcher dispatch to different components that subscribe to dispatcher. So that's the reason why we need classes. And another thing about the, the good thing about classes is that you can see all of the actions that the particular store has to handle so so now we have two actions and let's go ahead and implement dispatcher right? dispatcher should be outside of the store so we're going to add a class right here and uh and let's call it uh, action dispatcher action dispatcher so action dispatcher uh will will allow uh, different stores to subscribe to it right so remember this is a publish subscribe pattern which is also called observer pattern right so first we need a you know we, we need action and uh, we just call it registered action handlers right and then to have a public method register right? we register basically or maybe we should call it subscribe right? uh, subscribe subscribe so we're passing an action which is delegate right um, passing an action handler and we're gonna Call it registered action handlers. We do we attach the handler, and that's it. And and another one will be the and subscribe right? and action handler as well. And the only thing that is different is doing this. And of course, we need our so actually very simple. Well, we need our dispatch method, which will be called. Uh, by our component dispatch different actions okay. so we'll, we'll just do this and then here we just say you know register store if it, if it exists then we invoke and pass in the action all right to simplify this um, we can include this magic wand this magic wand thing and this expression body right and we do the same thing here it will make it look way simpler it's the same thing but it will make it look simpler but remember this dispatcher right it has to be called by all kinds of components 
So we need to do dependency injection and in order to do the dependency injection, we need to have a interface. And we don't have to do it line by line. So we can just uh, go to edit and then go to refactor and then select extract interface, right? Right here. We can also just do control R, I, right? Control R, control I. So this will, so I action dispatcher. Right, we're going to create a new file and uh, we are going to have uh, all three methods to be included. All right, so we implement that. And uh, the I action dispatcher is right here and that's exactly what we need. Okay, now we need to go to startup and right over here. And we don't want to do a singleton right here because if we do a singleton, then uh, the action will be dispatched to different users. We want it to be scoped to the, the connection. So we can call it, we can still use scoped. And then we are going to use I action uh, dispatcher okay, and associate that with the concrete implementation. And that's it for uh, dependency injection configuration. So now we have the action dispatcher. We have implemented the, the action, uh, the actions, which are the increment and decrement action. Now, what we need to do is uh, we need to use it uh, in our store because our store need to be able to handle those actions. Right. <clears throat> so, we will uh, dependency inject. First, we will need to dependency inject dispatcher, right, dispatcher, and control dot. Uh, we'll we'll select the uh, the second one. Right, so we we'll have this that action dispatcher action dispatcher. So this is right here, and I put it right inside of our observer pattern here, and I don't want it to be here. So I will put it up here. Actually, I'll put it up there. And then, so I have a dispatcher, and what we need to do is that we need to uh, register to the dispatcher. So what we can do is action dispatcher, dot register actually subscribe right and uh, we need to subscribe we can put in our action handler and where is our actual action handler we don't have it yet and so so right under done under here we can create the action uh, the handler which can be a uh, private method handle actions and we need to be able to pass in different kinds of actions <clears throat> right uh, that's why we need an action and and then we can subscribe and pass into this so this is the um, action handler right in here so in, in here, we're also facing the same uh, question. Are we gonna call and subscribe here? Okay. So are we gonna implement the uh, destructor, right? The finalizer that, uh, so, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, are we gonna do this? Counter store and uh, are we gonna say, uh, this dot action dispatcher dot uh, and subscribe handle actions. Okay. Are we gonna do this? Uh, I would say we don't need to because they both scope to the same action, same connection, right? So they have the same lifespan. So when one is collected, the other one is also gone. So. In order to simplify our codes, I'm not going to implement that. So here, 
we are going to handle different kinds of actions and we have a choice to not handle every be not handle every action because dispatcher is going to dispatch all kinds of actions to all kinds of components that are uh, subscribed to the dispatcher right so all components that subscribe to the dispatcher will need to determine whether the action is something that uh, that they want to handle so uh, because every action has a name right so we can use that so in here you can say increment action dot remember it has a constant so we can do this right? and then decrement de if it's a decrement action decrement action then it also has has its name action dot name so we can uh, in here what we need to do is so we're gonna call the increment count that we implemented last time right and then here we're gonna call the command count and this can become private right, so so we registered right we subscribed here and then we're handling the actions right here uh, and now we need to go to our counter because you're gonna see problems here that this is private right? so in order to fix this problem so we are not actually directly calling this method anymore we are going to uh, dependency inject our uh, I dispatcher action dispatcher so we call it action action this patcher and then in this increment here we're going to dispatch a action and what that action is it's going to be the increment action and that's it so this uh because this is um in the memory is centralized and this will publish this action to all of the stores and the store well currently we only have one store to deal with this uh to all of the stores and the store will will determine that we're going to handle it or not in our counter store yes we're handling both the increment and decrement okay right, so this right here we will still keep it right here because uh, this remember we have two level of we have two levels of uh, observer pattern so this is to <clears throat> attach listeners to the store in order to get notified when the state changes so this we have to keep right here the only thing we need to change is this uh, action dispatcher thing so instead of calling the store directly we're dispatching this action to uh, through the action dispatcher and uh, to that will actually publish the actions to all of the stores that subscribe to the action dispatcher right uh, so let's give that a try so I'm gonna do control f5 running the application right here yeah that works okay so this is uh, how I implemented the dispatcher you can implement in different ways uh, another thing you can do is you can have this action dispatcher action interface and i action dispatcher you can extract this into a class library and use it in different kinds of projects and uh, you can even in um, implement a store state store base and in there you kind of subscribe to the action dispatcher and when you implement a state store you can just inherit from state store base so that you don't have to do this subscription uh, all the time okay so that's everything i want to demonstrate in this video and if you like my videos please give it a like and subscribe and i'll see you in my next video thank you for watching